Okay, here we go. So, when you're multiplying things with exponents, if they have the same base, okay, the base will continue and the exponents will add. Okay? Now, if the exponents add when you're multiplying, what do you think the exponents do when you divide? That's right, subtract. So this would actually end up being 4 to the 5th. Now, anything to the power of 0, except for 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1, except for 0. Okay? So 18 to the power of 0 is 1. 118 to the power of 0 is 1. Uh, 1118 to the 0 equals 1. So anything to the power of 0 equals 1. Then, here, now, the bases are different, but the exponents are the same. So the exponents will continue being 5, and these two will multiply, becoming 6. Now, some of the problems are not that easy, okay? I'm going to do some questions that have negative numbers to show you what's going on. Now, when you combine a positive and a negative, okay, the first thing you have to look at is which number is further away from zero. In this case, the six is. So the positive, I know that the answer to this problem is going to have a positive solution. The second thing you check is, are the signs the same or different? If they are different, these two numbers are going to subtract, making the answer four. Here, I know that the base is going to stay five. But now I know that negative 5 and negative 3 are actually going to subtract. Now, when one number has two signs, like this one does, two negatives actually create a positive situation here. So negative 5 plus 3. So negative 5 plus 3, the negative controls the sign, so I know the answer is going to be negative. And the signs are different, so these two numbers are going to subtract, making it two. All right, and now the next thing. For this one, if we get answers that are negative, I'd like you to change them into positive. So the negative exponent is constantly telling you I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong side of the fraction. So if the bottom is the wrong side of the fraction, that means it belongs on the top. So seven to the power of eight divided by one. Now I didn't flip it, okay? What I did was move this to the top, meaning that if there's nothing on the bottom of the fraction, it turns into a one, okay? Now this divided by this actually just ends up being seven to the power of eight all by itself. The next thing I have here is three to the negative five. Now you can't see it, but it's definitely not at the bottom of a fraction. So if it's not at the bottom, that means it's at the top. So it kind of looks, whoa, relax. It kind of looks like this, which means this belongs at the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of the fraction. There's nothing left up there, so I'm going to put a 1. Here's another example. Now both of these have a negative sign, which means they're both in the wrong spot. So I'm going to put it here. So this is in the wrong spot. It's in the top, so it actually belongs at the bottom. This one is at the top. I mean, is at the bottom, which means it belongs in the top because it says I'm in the wrong spot. Now, if you haven't noticed, when I actually do put it in the correct spot, it changes the negative into a positive. Last example here. Now, the 4, 8 belongs up there. It's positive and it belongs up there. This one does not belong down here, so it actually belongs up here with that one. There's nothing on the bottom, so we're going to put a 1. But anything divided by 1 is actually going to be that anyway. Okay? Scientific notation with a single digit, which means we'll round every single time. So if this is a single digit with rounding, so we're going to make the decimal point here, bring down 3.5, okay? And this is where the decimal point originally was, and this is where I've moved it to. So let's round 3.5. 3.5 rounded is actually going to make a 4. Now, all I have to do is figure out how many times did I move the decimal point to get from here to there. 
We can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So now you write times 10 to the power of six because that's how many times you need to move the decimal point. This one over here. So here's the original decimal point, and now I'm gonna scan until I run into a, a natural number, which is the two here. So right after the natural number, I'm gonna put a dot. Now I have 2.7, I have to round this. So it's actually gonna end up being three. Times 10 to the power of what? How many times did I move this? One, two, three, four, five. So it actually is going to be a five. But I can't make these look exactly the same, so I'm gonna put a negative sign telling me that I have to make this number smaller. So I have to make this number smaller by five times for it to equal what it used to equal. So let's do this now. So let's convert scientific notation to standard notation. So if I have a four, and here's the decimal point, and I have to make it larger four times. So one, two, three, four. I fill in all these spots with zeros. So now I know the answer is 40,000. Same thing here. I start with a three. I know the decimal point is here. It wants me to make it smaller five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Smaller. So now I fill in all these spots. So now this is 0 .00003 is my final answer. And that's it.